Good morning. Thank you for the company. We will be looking at the headlines making the rounds in our newspaper. This is Off the Press. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I'm joined by um, Aisha Yusufu, um, co convener Bring Back Our Girls Group. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, the Punch newspaper has the um, number of Nigerian doctors in the United Kingdom rises to 7,875. Uh, we have uh, India, Pakistan, Nigeria have highest number of migrant doctors in UK. Low pay, poor facilities, insecurity forcing doctors out, says NMA. There is a breakdown of countries with migrant doctors in the UK also on the front page. Just above the masthead, we're looking at We've identified plans to generate 18 trillion naira revenue. That's the federal government. WAEC FG considers November December GCE option. Akwabio recants as reps move to sue for defamation perjury. And then at the top, we have um, just above that, we have Nigeria lost 1.4 billion dollars to chemical importation in 2019. That's uh, on page uh, 17 of the paper. Well, we must uh, acknowledge the passing of um, Arotile to Lulokbe, uh, NF, NAF of the Spay tribute as Arotile is buried in Abuja. Those are pictures of the lady uh, being laid to rest. May her soul rest in peace. Uh, the third mainland bridge, 650 Lasma, 250 FRSC officials to manage traffic. Outrage over treatment of lady arrested with boyfriend. And then Jigede talks tough, vows to end Akaradolu's reign. Over to you now, um, Aisha. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much. Uh, for me, I'm going to start with this very uh, sad one here. Uh, as we pray, uh, the nation prays a uh, tribute to Arotile as uh, she's buried in Abuja. It's, it's quite uh, so painful that life so young uh, was cut short. Uh, there, uh, hopefully, uh, there's transparency in the investigation and everything. I, I, I do know for me, I, I personally, I, I know of freak accidents, and I've, there have been a, quite a number, you know, of reversals of cars and, and all of that, you know, getting to scaling somebody. There even some think it's so unusual, but it's actually a bit common if, if, if you check them. But the most important thing of also for me is to look at what our healthcare system, a situation whereby, you know, hitting your head on the pavement, it, it's, it's, there's so much trauma to the head. But in certain countries where you have top-notch healthcare system, I've, I've, I've watched uh, 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 documentaries where they actually have to saw the head and remove the, the, the half of the skull just to allow the brain to have sufficient time to swell. And so these are some of the things that we don't have in our, uh, in our country. And these are the ways in which corruption at the end of the day affect all of us. And sometimes you find a situation whereby within three minutes, people are taken away when there are healthcare crises, they are flown to where they can get the hospitals, where they can get the best of treatment. All of these are things that are not in Nigeria and they affect us all. And it's very important that we begin to look also into the uh, uh, healthcare uh, system. May her soul continue to rest in peace. May God give uh, fortitude to her parents and families and friends and the nation to continue uh, to bear this loss. Still talking about the healthcare system, I will move on to the issue of the Nigerian doctors. The number of Nigerian doctors in UK rises to 7,875 doctors from a nation where we, we need doctors so much over here. And you know, for me, the saddest thing about this all is the fact that Nigeria, I believe, is one of the countries where you can get medical education almost next to nothing. The amount we pay here, it's really nothing when you compare it to what is paid uh, in, in other countries. And then the nation trains this doctor and we allow them to just live because we don't give them the conducive environment for them to operate uh, very well and thrive in their own country. With the COVID-19, you see what the UK has done. They have uh, the, uh, the restriction on visa for doctors have been you know, brought down. They've made it e very easy for doctors to be able to come over there. That's what smart countries do. Not our kind of country where we, we do not take things like this in, in, into consideration. And of course, more doctors, more doctors are, are thinking 
uh, uh, are going out. I mean, every family you look at, if you have doctors around them, most of them, if not, a good number of them are leaving the country, are either out of the country or they are working very hard to leave the country. And you can't blame them because of what we, we, we have uh, uh, in our country. Uh, same way, the issue of the on those day each issue is still there. At the bottom there, you have Jagede Top Stuff, vows to end a fair abuse rate. And for me, it's just in, a, in as much as it's the normal politics where there's so much fluid, fluid, fluidity, right? Uh, where part, uh, be, uh, politicians move from one party to the other. It just, they have no regard. There are no, no ideologies, nothing. APC, PDP, the same thing, move on. But this, this just shows to say that it's it, people where people there, they have, they, they, they have what they're doing, their own state in, in, in uh, PDP. It's not every time that they uh, change their parties that they win. It has happened before in other uh, elections where, uh, in other primaries where the person actually leaves the end of uh, not, not winning. But at the end of the day, they, it's still the same old symbol. The citizens aren't the ones who are, who are benefiting. Let's um, uh, take your thoughts on the lady that was... Um um, verbally abused uh, by um, officers. The picture is on the front page, outrage over treatment of lady arrested. The, the police say they're working on the, the people have been arrested. I mean, this behavior seems repetitive in spite of um, uh, no efforts to uh, curtail it. Um, so, uh, so let me, you need to help me there with a little bit of background story because I don't know anything other than just this headline that I'm seeing here. But if it has to do with disrespect for women, uh, well, it's something that, that that happens a lot in our society. It's something that it, it, it's acknowledged, it's, it, it's endured, it, it's even seen as, as normal. And as long as we have this conditioning going on, it, 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 it's something that is going to take a whole lot more for us to put uh, uh, a stop to it. So it's quite, uh, it's, it's quite uh, uh, disgraceful the way uh, women are treated because we are seen as a, as a lesser form. And then most times because we, a woman is automatically seen as a victim because some people know they can do anything. So when they see a woman, they see somebody they can do anything to the way they want to and get away with it because the society will allow them to uh, get away with it. It is time we begin to put an end to that. I'm seriously put an end to that. Uh, all right, um, let's uh, move on to the nation now. We have the correct uh, version of the nation newspaper this morning. So we'll take a look at uh, the big one. Senate 6 sack of NDDC IMC refund of 4.9 billion naira. Uh, there are a couple of writers to that story. Report exposes massive financial recklessness. Akpabio backtracks as House plans court action. Panel proposes invitation of anti-graft agencies. PDP will defeat Akara Dolusa's Jegede. That one was captured. And of course, the military honors for Aratile as she's buried. Edo State is also um, captured, seems on a permanent uh, basis on the front page of the nation. PDP leaders supplied document used to nail Obaseki. Ask governor to account for money received, says APC. Youths hail Ize Yamu's simple agenda. Why Obasaki is after Okumbo, his firms, that's another one for you. Pipils have November GC option, says Minister. Lagos virus cases to rise next month. PTF cautions um, on a few, on, let's see what that is, on Idel Kabir. PDF cautions on Idel Kabir. Um, Aisha, which of these uh, sticks out to you more? Uh, the one that sticks out to me more is the, photo, is the photo that is there. The photo of uh, Major General Mohamed Bukhari wearing the face mask. And I think uh, we haven't seen him wearing face mask a while he's been in Nigeria. We're on his way out. And you know, it, 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 it's, it's, so, it's so irresponsible. Responsible, and I'm using that word with all sense of responsibility to so say the president is highly irresponsible with the things that are happening in Nigeria. He had the guts, he had the temerity, he had the audacity with impunity to, to fly out of the nation, to go to Mali, to go and settle other issues when his country is actually burning. Nigerians were slaughtered, 
Eight workers were slaughtered by, by Boko, executed by Boko Haram. People are being killed all over the nation. The Southern Kaduna people came out to protest. Women came out naked to protest the killings. They are tired and sick of the killings. And yet the presidency added salt to injury by writing all sorts of things. The, 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 the chief of army staff has, has come out to say that citizens are the reason why they but, have uh, not... But Aisha, the to be fair, no, Aisha. Aisha, to so be fair. Aisha, to be fair, we will always have a challenge or the other in this country. Does that mean that he should neglect other responsibilities as a president? Can you tell me which of the challenges in Nigeria that the president has flown to? Or are you telling me the challenges that have happened all over the state in Nigeria, there's none that warrant the interest of the president leaving the Aso Villa, the safety of the villa to go there. But he, he could leave the safety of the villa to go to Mali Parliament and Mr. I know we want to find as much as we can to, to give slack to the president. This is not it. Your life and my life should come first. Eight workers have been slaughtered. Look at me right now. If you and I were slaughtered, that's the same thing he's going to do. He's not going to care. What kind of a country does that? He's the president and commander-in-chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. First and foremost, the Nigerian life must matter. And we as citizens must ensure that we, our lives matter to our government. And right now, it doesn't. Are you talking about, have you seen the number of, every time we read headlines here, people are being killed daily. Yet the president hasn't done anything. He hasn't even given the to live there to check his own country. But the first opportunity to jump on a plane and fly out of the country, he was on it. And that's why it's sad. All right, let's uh, look at the Senate situation with the NDDC IMC. They are recommending that it be dissolved. And, of course, they refund the monies that uh, they spent uh, without proper uh, due process. Absolutely. I think it, that's the way to go. That's, that's the kind of thing that uh, the Senate uh, should, should be doing. Uh, because it's so... We shouldn't condone all of this uh, spending, videos of spending, and they sometimes try to justify them. I, I saw some WhatsApp mess uh, messages going on. I got one where somebody is saying that, oh, this leads to a man that this one spent, all that has spent. It does, corruption is corruption, irrespective, and there's nothing like lead P not in any corruption because our lives are being affected. Uh, by all of this corruption case. And I think the Senate has done a good thing by asking that they do respond to that and also the, the solution of the of the INC. All right. And then also, uh, the Akpabio, this and I saw that Akpabio has done a back track on the statement that he made. I mean, he should get some leave and name names. If, if those are not hidden secrets, we, we live in a country where even if you need a job today, you are told to go and find a senator or something. Is it contract? that you will not go and find the senator or something. He should just have the guts to come out and just say things the way they are. Okay, um, let's see um, which other paper we have. The Guardian newspaper is next for review. Uh, Knox, again, Akpabio is here. Uh, Knox, anger, Akpabio denies claim against a uh, house of reps. Um, but if, if we look at it, though, Aisha, he, in his comment in the video, he said that... Um, members of the National Assembly. He wasn't specific about the Knight Assembly. Will that be some sort of defense um, in your thinking uh, for him now with his uh, rebuttal that people are saying he's recanting? Okay, so uh, in also the, the what he has been asked to uh, make was, he was asked to name names. Nobody said that he has to name names of the members of the Knight Assembly, right? So why is he not naming names? The issue is that he was asked to name friends, and then he, it's just the same thing. They are, we all just have corruption is so rife in this country that people just it, it's as if it's normal, and we just need to begin to put an end to it. And most times you find out that people have skeletons in their cupboard, so they can't really come out and speak and say things the way they are. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's it's like a circle, a monkey circle that they are all uh, involved in. Because what does it take to name names? There are people, as long as you have, and before you say anything, you must ensure you have your empirical evidence, right? And these evidences are there. Why is he, why is he afraid? Name the names. And let's begin to name and shame in our country. Everybody must be held 
responsible. We cannot just begin to keep, uh, push these things out of the out of the way. Uh, our you, country you, is falling apart just because of all of this things happening in our country. You mentioned something earlier. You talked about the Kaduna women. The, there is a, a report on it here. Women go naked over fresh killings in Kaduna. Uh, that's at the very bottom, um, embossed in red for all to see. Um, what's your thinking? Uh, what kind of frustration would make women uh, do that kind of thing? And what would be a decisive response from the government? You know, it's, 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 so, it's so unbelievable. Let's even start from the decisive response from the government. Decisive response from, from, response from government will be the president and commander-in-chief going to Southern Kaduna, meeting with the people and saying to them, look, enough is enough, and I'm, I'm, coming, I'm coming to lead this from the front, and we're going to do all, we, all we, we, we can do and more to ensure that we put an end to it. Talk to them with empathy. Talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Then begin to deploy the right people there that will handle the situation. We, we, but this cannot overwhelm Nigeria. Nigerian military is one of the best, if not the best in Africa. We are up notch. But the issues are corruption and bad leadership. The kind of leaders we have on them have really put everything out of the way. And then begin to ensure that we begin to fight this bandit, not just to go there, take some pictures and the military will leave. No, one after the other, come increase intelligence gathering, ensure there are people who are there. Where are these people coming from? Where are they and, and all of that? These are some of the things that we need to do. And yet, as a nation, we are not being there. The people are being killed every day. They say, I have a friend who is from that region. She said, they don't, they are, their people don't sleep anymore. Even in the, in the afternoon, in the morning, all throughout the night, they can't sleep. They are being killed every time. And what is most ironic about this whole thing is that, that Nasser Erufai, who is the chief security officer of Kaduna State, is nowhere to be found. This was the same person whom during, uh, uh, when he was not in government, he, he made the mass, he said all sorts of things. He told us that there's no heart that uh, people in charge don't have, uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, military intelligence for what is going on. But today, as, as a chief security officer of his state, he suddenly quiet. Nothing is going on. He's not making demands on the federal government to protect his people. Yes, we do understand that our constitution, the way it is set up, the chief security officer does not have direct control over security agencies. But then he has direct control over his mouth and his capacity to make demands for his people to be protected. But Nasser Erufai is nowhere to be found. And um, people are being killed. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Any government that fails to protect the lives and properties of its citizens is not fit to be called the government. All right, Aisha, let's uh, see what we can do with the Business Day newspaper, uh, the big one here. Again, there's a picture of the president alighting uh, from a flight. Uh, COVID-19, how human rights suffocate and are curbing measures. Nigeria's discos blighted by high overheads related party deals. And then inside the paper, we have COVID-19 may slow CBN's 80% financial inclusion by 2020. Um, let's look at the big one, uh, the human rights suffocate under uh, curbing measures. Uh, so I'm a bit, uh, can you come on that again? We are business day, right? The business day, COVID-19. Okay, yeah. How human rights suffocate under curbing measures after President after President Muhammad Buhari relaxed the uh, month-long restriction on movement in Lagos, basic human rights have been trampled under strokes of several violations, uh, leaving adverse toll on Nigerians. That's uh, a report, an investigative report uh, by the Business Day. Well, uh, you, you know... <sighs> I, I don't even know where to come. Uh, Human what to rights. Say right we've, now. Known that, we've known that there are spikes in rape right. cases. Um, we have fathers. We had an exclusive report here the other day of a father um, raping, um, I think, a less than nine year old uh, daughter. Uh, we have a report of you know escalation in domestic violence. We have so many reports of people um, who cannot leave because they are compelled to be in a particular position. Uh, human rights violation, basically. I guess uh, that is an you know, an amplification of what we seem to already know. 
Yes. So, 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 what, what I'm trying to look for, I, there has been escalation in the domestic violence and, and all of that. The thing is that human rights violation has been so right before, even before now. Yet it has come out more within the within the COVID nineteen, uh, the pandemic we have had. But the most the most important thing is the fact that. As a nation, we've not seen these things as issues. We've not taken them seriously enough. We've not, there has been fight to ensure human rights violation is reduced, but we're not winning that war. And we need to begin to do that. And it, because I don't want us to just focus and look at it as if it's only the COVID-19 that has, you know, brought this thing on. It's been there all this while. And we should begin to look at it holistically. Uh, it's, it's really sad at what, especially with the sexual uh, violence, especially with uh, all the domestic violence, having people in the same way, uh, in the same place, lo locked up together, brought out a lot of uh, uh, this violence in people. Also, again, with the uh, economic uh, issues, the economic downturn, there is more of it. People are fighting over nothing. Because one of the things we have is that when there is... When there's poverty, this fight escalates like no man's business. You know, when uh, there's scarcity, there's scarcity. It takes very little to trigger this thing. And everything, this violence is always based or is power-based. So you look at the person that you can dominate and show that you are still the, the essence of who you are. And they keep dominating. And I think we, we, we actually, as a nation, really, really, really need to, to take this as a real uh, major issue and begin to deal with them. Aisha Yusufu, always a pleasure to have you on the newspaper review. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. It's always my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Do take care of yourself. Bye now. All right, that's where we wrap things up on Off the Press. I hope uh, you were able to get some insight to um, what's behind uh, the headlines. Uh, it returns on Monday at 8.30 in the morning. Please join us again. In the meantime, take care and I will see you soon.